very wrong. Yes! Yes! This is the next part I'm going to be fitting to my bike. It's a 3D printed tube. It's still needs to be painted. It's still needs to be fitted. I can quickly show you how it's going to fit and what it's going to do. So I'll start with a problem. I don't like these straps, these straps, all of this loose cabling just hanging around. <laughs> just hanging around. And so I wanted a way to manage that mess. I have two extra screw hole things. You can see there's three holes. So I'm gonna have to install an extra rivet nut under here to hold this in properly. But this will sit on those screws, clip into place, and then I can run my cables down through the tube and I won't need all this excess or any of the straps or anything. There's some video of kind of how we went through a few prototypes of the tube. Started off small, make sure it fitted to the screws. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, and then progressed up from there. So that's the plan. That's how it fits. The next stage is to paint it. I bought primer and matte black. Before the paint, I need to take off burrs from the 3D printing. The finish on this 3D print is actually pretty good. I don't think I actually need to take anything off from the outside. Now for a bit of cleaning. I got this little contraption to hang this. Go down, hook in there. That's fairly windy, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, it's been probably over an hour, just dry. So I'm gonna flip it round. Ready for uh, coat number two. Time for a third and final coat. I'm not gonna do the top coat today because it's too windy. This will probably be fine, but I'm just gonna do an extra layer. That'll do for the primer coat, that's done. Wait a couple days for a dry and uh, wind-free day. Today seems okay. We'll apply the black top coat. Yeah. There's a first layer. It's not too even, but it's only the first coat. I don't want to make it too thick. Now for layer two. Don't think I'm going to win any painting awards, but it's more black than it was before. Time for the third coat. I think I'm going to try an up and down motion this time to give more even coat. I'll let it fully dry for at least like 24 hours uh, and then we'll give it an inspection. Okay, here it is. Blends in quite nicely black. The finish isn't 100% perfect, but I'm happy enough to carry on. There's a few like lines and differences in color you can see on the way down, but that's fine. The next thing that needs to be done is we need to drill a hole for a third riv nut on the bottom. I think the best way is to take tracing paper or tape or something, draw on where the gaps are for the hole and then transfer that to the bike. That's my plan. We'll see what happens. Right, I gotta make sure I don't do anything stupid like put it upside down. So I'm just gonna write top. This would probably be easier with the bike upside down. Let's do that. Well, if you can hear some strange noises, there's some good old bailing going on. So let's unscrew this. So I've scrubbed a thick layer of pencil on there. Hopefully it leaves a nice imprint. So that's the correct length. You just need to get the center. I did try and print this like 3D center finding tool, but it's because this 
is rounded, it's difficult to find the exact center. So I don't think this is really gonna work. You can't quite see it, but I use the two original mounting holes to help me draw straight square lines. Hopefully you can see that. I've taken some more time just to do some extra measuring. We can start to drill the red nut. We've got this fancy little center punch. Punched hole if you can see it. So let's do it. Somebody commented last time that maybe a step drill bit might be a good idea. I just don't have one at the moment, so I'm gonna be just stepping up using different sized drill bits every time. Last size. Do a little check to see. Here's a rivnut tool that I, same one I used when I did the other rivnuts. I'll, I'll see if I can remember to link some of this stuff screws into the rib nut. Main thing is to keep it square. Not loose anymore. And the hardest part of doing this all is knowing how tight to do this up. Loosen this. Seems pretty good and it's contoured to the curve of the tube so I'm happy with that. We can see if it's gonna fit or not. The moment of truth. Come on. One, two, three. Yes! I tell you that is a relief. Pretty solidly on there. So that's our attachment done. What I don't like is it's touching to avoid that, I can try 3D printing a small spacer. Time to get all this wiring shortened. At this point, my microphone ran out of battery, but here I'm just taking off all the straps and putting the cable through the tube to get a measurement ready to shorten it. And here, I can't actually put the cable through whilst the tube is on the bike because the big connectors hit against the screw heads. So I have to take it off first, feed it through and then put it on afterwards. So with it on, I can check that there's enough clearance when I turn the handlebars, the forks and the tires are all clear, get a final measurement and then make the cut. Naively, I thought this part of the cable would just be one thick cable, but actually there was eight inside. And this means there's more to solder and it's a lot more fiddly. Okay, so this is the, uh, the result of the soldering. If you twist it and twist it and twist it, it forms a much nicer, neater line. Shrink it down. Do you know the other thought I've had is that I haven't actually tested this cable yet <laughs> and I've put glued shrink wrap all over it so I'm gonna have to hope and pray that it works. So what I didn't think about when I was shortening the cable was that the connection is going to be inside here. I can't connect them whilst they're in the tube because obviously I can't reach them. Uh, so luckily the solution was to bunch the cable up at the top then slide the tube up higher up so that the connection poked out the bottom. It's poking out the bottom. Then I could connect them. Okay, it's connected. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's put the battery on. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. Switch it on. I've never seen that before. Down the bottom. That's interesting. So something is very wrong here. To work out what the problem is, I drew a diagram of the different connectors and then I can mark off which ones aren't working properly. So I only have to fix one of them, not all of them. 
I then used an electric meter to find the broken connections and uh, for some of them I had to use a pin to get inside the tiny connectors. Then it turned out it was one contact which wasn't working um, so I'll aim to try and fix that one first. And then it's a case of uh, finding which cable was a problem one so I opened them up and tested them one by one until I found it on the fifth try and the fifth cable and I was pretty happy to figure it out. After all that cable diagnosis I think it was the orange cable that was the problem so I am going to double check it works beforehand this time. Yes! Yes! We don't have the warning message anymore. Left brake, that works. Right brake, that works. And here comes the throttle. And if you heard that, that also works. Yes! We're in, we're away, we fixed the problem. Last little modification I want to make here is to add a little spacer to this bottom rib nut. So I'm going to quickly measure up so I can design and 3D print just a small little plastic spacer to put around this nut here. These are the five spacers I've 3D printed and they're all different heights starting from 4mm going up to 10mm. This is the 6mm spacer a much bigger clearance gap here. That is perhaps too much. So I'm gonna go for a smaller spacer. So this time I'm gonna use the four, four mil spacer. Looks good. have it, a finished, fully custom, 3D printed cable management solution. A subtle change but a clean one and I think it makes it look one step better than just a DIY e-bike. The elimination of cable ties, straps and excess cable finish off nicely and I'd love to hear your comments on whether you like or dislike this customization and also if you know of any builds out there that have cable management like this one. Oh, 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 oh,